everyone so um, today I want to mix my hematite violet genuine um, I will touch on the subject of genuinity um, in the next video so today is I believe today is Monday so on Wednesday um, yeah I'm hoping to film a video and just share my thoughts on this whole situation with uh, Daniel Smith Primatech line and uh, today I'm not going to um, talk about it today I want to just mix and see what um, kind of colors and mixtures I will come up with that I enjoy now the idea I had is to go through my watercolor stash and find colors that I will like so for instance these are my yellows just to give you a, a brief idea so the um, the idea here is to go through all of my color groups so next one would be orange then I'd go through the uh, reds the pinks purples blues turquoises greens neutrals blah blah blah, blah. and kind of um, fish out a couple of the colors I don't think my intent is to mix it with every single color because I probably would run out of this color even though I have a second tube of it uh, very quickly but also I don't want to use colors that I love as they are I just don't want to do that so nickel azo yellow and this is by Daniel Smith and Schminke rutile yellow I'm going back into my yellow orange um, tray and the colors that I will mix them with are lemon yellow new gamboge indian yellow is another yellow that i love but i have a little bit left here so i might want to just use it up and then i wonder how it mixes with more opaque colors and i will try the naples yellow see how it mixes if i still get something interesting going on there then i will also try the other opaques other uh, otherwise i will just uh, eliminate the opaques from possible mixes in the future videos so let's try it this way and see what happens I'll keep these just on a side so before you ask I know you will this tray I made sure I bought a few of them before you go <laughs> and purchase all of them and they sell out and um, you know they won't be available so these are trays I found on Amazon they're really thin they are just slightly bigger than my phone slightly taller but like the same width um, so just to give you an idea so this is the iPhone X so about a centimeter taller and they have a perfect ridge so not too tall not too small and they give me the possibility of mixing larger swatches so what I have been doing here since all of this uh, Primatech thing happened Oh, and the other thing is they are, no, they're not. I was going to say they're stackable. They have a bit of a lip here, but they're not stackable. That's a shame. What I was doing is I was <laughs> trying desperately to mix my own Sodalite Genuine because I ain't buying them anymore. <laughs> Way too expensive to buy something that's not even on the tube. So anyway, or whatever is on the tube is not in the tube, rather. Um, I did get a similar ish mix but not quite so I still need to carry on trying um, but basically my mix here was ivory black by Schminke which is PBK9 carbonized bones of animals in case you don't know and don't want to use um, products that are non-vegan so PBK9 is to be avoided in that case Schminke Mars Black, which is PBK11, Iron Oxide, the super granulating black. And what I thought as a third compound would be a Schminke Ultra, um, not Schminke, but Ultramarine Blue. Now, in this case, I went for the Schminke, the PB15, which is Tallow Blue, and PB29, Ultramarine Blue. So it's not a clean uh, mix. So this one has a bit of that um, extra... Um, vibrancy in there and it kind of goes into a warm tone because of the phthalo blue so um, yeah I have since ordered the Daniel Smith um, 
ultramarine and a couple of the other colors and I'm totally totally intending to try and mix from their own pigments so I bought a few um, Schminke in Daniel Smith which is actually one of the next videos that will be coming hopefully yeah Friday video should be uh, me swatching uh, these tubes out okay um, yeah so that's it and that's why I went ahead and I bought a bigger size where I could just you know create bigger mixes and that way it's easier to just carry on um, on sort of a multitude of swatches okay so I actually got three and what I'm intending to use them for is sort of like you know um, cools warms and neutrals and see how I get on I think that should be enough for me so just in case they will be sold out now that I mentioned uh, I'm good to go right so for the for the sketchbook I'm using Strathmore visual journal it's the watercolor 300 GSM cold press paper I have to say it's not uh, the best paper but it's good enough I mean you know I wouldn't blame the paper for some of the things coming out not vibrant so here for instance this was not vibrant and I had a few suggestions that it could be the sizing of the paper but then why is everything vibrant on this side for instance which is the same as that one so it's got that texture these pages are double-sided so they have a smoother texture on one side and a bit more of a texture on the other and of course the sizing could be different but then it, like I said here the swatches look super vibrant here they're not here super vibrant here super vibrant here not so it's um it's more to do with and here they're super vibrant so it's more to do with the um the mixes i think than the um you know the paper but anyway i am enjoying it because it's such a great um little book for me to come in here and just check certain mixes certain recipes and then on occasion to have a little swatch out just to see how they work so i have also been playing around trying to recreate my paints gray although these are not your traditional paints gray these should be just grays a traditional paints gray is a mixture of ivory black which is that non-vegan based black which i told you about so here it is the Carbonized Bones of Animals, PBK29, and PB29 Ultramarine Blue. So here is the PB29 Ultramarine Blue without the other. So this is the Ultramarine Finest by Schminke, and the other one was that I showed you is the Ultramarine Blue uh, by Schminke. So you can see this is has more kind of red tone in there, and this is warmer. I always get the warm and the cold confused, so is this warm and this colder? But you know what I mean. Where is the color wheel when you need it? Okay, so let's have a look. So yeah, the more cooler it is, the more red it has. The more warm it is, the more green it has. So this would be a warm, so it's the other way around, and this would be a cool, so you can see that. It's a nice little helper if you are as confused as I am about these warms and colds okay completely sidetracked but here I just wanted to show you some beautiful grace I mix and by the way Schminke Indigo can we just take a moment to just adore this color I I need to play with this more it's beautiful not so much interesting in the mixes because it's already super interesting as it is and basically the ivory black just swallowed it up here you can't see any of the indigo left then these colors this is a mix with the prussian blue and in dantheran blue again all of the ivory black mixes and here are the ultramarine finest and ivory black and you can see it's pretty much oops that mix here so it's really easy to mix this one. It's a convenience color, uh, but you can totally mix these with um, your own colors. And this is what I'm kind of lately interested in, mixing my own colors and finding out some gems. 
jam mixes. Anyways, how long are we into the video? Way too long. Uh, it's probably a sign that I haven't filmed in a while. I have been preoccupied with making all of my watercolors. So, my um, Hematite Violet Genuine is going to be a bit on a thicker and drier mix because if you remember that video on Instagram where I opened it in the video and a bunch of like a teaspoon of gum arabic escaped out of the half pan which means that um, the you know the composition of the color has changed a little bit so I always need to add quite a bit of water and I'm basically left with less color that way so you can see how thick it is Okay, so in the previous video I have mentioned that it's not my favorite color purely because it's uh, a little bit strange. Can you see this weird... Here we go. This happening. So it's like a um, peach separation. And uh, yeah, so it kind of looks like a color gone wrong, but um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Um, so, the first colour I will try it with is the lemon yellow. So lemon yellow is great for mixes, I'm not really interested in it on its own. So, I'm just going to actually work with two brushes. I'm going to use one brush to swatch the clean colors and then the other for mixing. Okay, I decided to title them. So let's start with swatching out lemon yellow. So can you see what's happening here? We have the granulation and then there's a little bit of that peach it doesn't look like it's meant to separate in there. It just looks like, you know, a bit of that water from your mixes in the jar. That's how it looks to me like, but I don't know if that was the intention of this color or, or not. So, now I am going to swatch this color here. Hematite Violet Genuine. It's more like a Hematite Peach Genuine. Anyway, look at that, what's happening here. So we're going to add just a little bit of it into here. Oh, I remembered I didn't like this brush for mixes, so I should probably swap now. This is really beautiful, I'll bring you up closer. Yeah, I mean, just to touch on it briefly, I would love for these colors to still remain as they are because I think some of them are really interesting. Uh, but if nothing happens, I will not be purchasing them or repurchasing. I'll use up what I have. I'm talking about Primatex here. And I just don't feel like I appreciate after supporting, you know, Daniel Smith watercolors for so long, I don't appreciate being lied to about the ingredients. Um, so that's how I feel about that. But anyway, I don't want to get into it here. So, yeah, the um, lemon yellow is really doing a fantastic job of Bringing a really interesting color. Let's 
Let me just try adding a bit more clean lemon yellow. And just last one. It's probably this one here as it is. There we go. As with all colors that separate, it is worth to just give it some time. So I'm going to let them dry and as always, I don't like to waste anything, especially when I'm not planning to repurchase them. So I'm going to use my um, Strathmore mixed media and just carry on um, adding the swatches um, in here. Okay, so let's see, Hematite Violet Genuine, and next color, I will put, shall we do Naples Yellow, and see how, oh, there's a dried in there, oh my goodness. Wow, what has happened to my paint? I mean, it's hideous for me to go through to such measures. This is just not good. This is not that old, by the way. This is um, a pigment I bought last year. Oh dear. Anyway, so it should work like that. But it does not look great. I think what I may need to do is just scoop it out into a half pan. One second, just in case this happens to you, let's resolve this together. Okay, so here is what I'm going to do and I'm not sure if it's the right way or not and I'm hopefully going to keep all of my fingers by the end of this video. But I'm just going to cut along the tube like so. There we go, and you can see how dry this thing is. Oh, there we go, that's how dry it is. Hopefully not going to cut myself. And then I'm going to scoop out this pigment. So you should be able to use it, There's, there shouldn't be a problem with it. It's just incredibly dry and it's become like a rubber. So I'm just going to push it in right into all of the corners. Oh goodness. Oh. Um. I mean, this is the first time it's happening to me. Yikes. Oh, look at that. It just comes off like that. Huh. Okay, so then I'm going to just push it in quite firmly. Again, in all of the corners of it. Get all the air out. And then we have the last little bit left here, right at the base of the tube, or the top of it rather. Okay, I'm just going to do a bit of that. <laughs> this is so funny. There we go, look at that. 
I got every little bit out of it. Well, if you didn't uh, tune in for this, <laughs> I'll have to have a second half pan, I think. I hope you're still enjoying this video. Okay, so if you wanted to know the pigments, they are PW4, so it's white pigment, PY97 and PR101. So let's bring this bit into here, like that, push it in a bit, oh. and I think I'm going to take a bit of from here, it's like putty, or that kneadable eraser. Just going to make equal amount, hopefully, like that. There we go. So, as a watercolor, oh my god, making a mess here. As a watercolor, it should work absolutely fine. So, there you go. If you wondered, a whole tube of dry Daniel Smith paint makes two half pans full. Okay, so <laughs> let me clean my hands. <laughs> 